Chapter 3, Part 9 I want to help Pulseman too, our friend, Lugerman said forlornly as they sat in Eiji's small, stuffy apartment. Eiji continued to wallow in the misery of his own making. It was his fault his one-time best friend was DMIA. Leon Alexander, hacker alias Judge, sacrificed himself to save AG. He grabbed the royal knight and threw himself into a vortex. AG had never known such regret. Regret for harboring such enmity toward Leon simply because he was a hacker and AG was a code cracker. For following through on the SOC's request to take revenge on Leon. For even taking Professor Ryosenji up on his job offer in the first place. Lugamon, for their part, wasn't vomiting in the toilet through a veil of tears. They simply wanted to help Pulsmon because it felt like the right thing to do. Isn't that similar to how I digivolved and lost control? Lugamon wondered aloud. It was a solid theory. A.G. really did want to fight Leon with every fiber of his being. But it was more than a simple contest to see who was stronger, which was not how he figured Lugamon approached the situation. Lugamon saw Pulsmon as a friend. A.G. saw himself as a code cracker, and that made Leon a hacker. Well, they were adults now. Things were different, and they couldn't be friends anymore. Or so A.G. wanted to believe. Lugamon, I'm the reason you digivolved into hell, Lugamon, and went berserk in the first place. A.G. muttered dejectedly. A.G. knew the power his emotions had over Lugamon whenever he was inside the Digicore. In some cases, the emotions of a partner human were beneficial to Digivolution but they could just as easily be disruptive. Lugamon had no reason to match Eiji's intensity and digivolve into its ultimate form, absent the pressure from his partner. Yeah, you know, that's a great point. I would never have screwed up that badly, Lugamon chirped, rolling over onto their back and wiggling their fluffy belly. I just felt the need to beat him, to walk over to him, on the way to greater things. The code cracker in me felt compelled. Yeah, well, I wasn't about to lose to Pulsman either. <laughs> that, that, that's the difference. You didn't want to lose. I was terrified of losing. Eiji figured he'd lost the trust of the SOC and Professor Ryosenji would stop sending him work. I'd Back to my unpredictable, unstable life. I just couldn't face that, he said, finally saying what had been on his mind. It didn't sound all that embarrassing now that he'd said it, but it was difficult to give voice to nonetheless. Well then, let's go help him already. I'll save Pulsman, you save Leon. Yeah, let's do it, Eiji said wiping the vomit from his mouth. They had to do it. Otherwise, A.G. would never leave the confines of this cramped little apartment ever again. The same apartment he'd be in with the stability he so desperately wanted to protect. But it was his. His mind and body had already hit rock bottom. He'd seen scarier things than losing a fight. All right, A.G., mind link. You got it. A.G. shot back, tapping the Digimon linker. An error greeted him for his trouble. Ah, the vital check failed. We can't mind link, Lugumon said with a sigh. Eesh, that bad. A.G. knew he wasn't in a great place mentally, but had he really wasted away physically too? Rest is required between mind-linking sessions in order for the body to recover. Clearly, despite lying motionless under the covers in his futon for several days, Eiji hadn't actually been resting. Meh, 
That looks easy enough to bypass. <laughs> easy, you say? AJ replied, eager to hear more. Then again, if I do let you back into my digicore, I might go berserk. Ah, uh, fair point. AJ wouldn't want someone as atrophied and strung out as him hitching a ride in his soul either. We'll have to find some way of looking for them from here. Lugamon's words brought AJ back to reality. How could they possibly search for Leon from the real world? What happened to Kazuchimon once they passed through the hole in the vortex, opened in the firewall? Look, I don't know how to contact a Digimon that's fallen into a vortex either, if that's what you were gonna ask, Lugamon said preemptively. You couldn't ask around in the wall slum? I did a bit of that while you were zoned out in front of your futon, but I didn't get anywhere. No one knows what's beyond the firewall. AJ could post a reward for Pulsmon's capture on Grimm. But some street rat codecracker asking the Digimon of the Wall Slum to do something they didn't know how to do wasn't going to get them anywhere. Still, they had to try anything and everything. If only AJ could figure out where to start. A doorbell rang. No. Eiji's doorbell rang. He hadn't ordered anything, so it couldn't be a delivery. A door-to-door -door salesperson? A noise complaint from a neighbor who thought he was being too loud? Eiji had to see who it was. He suddenly got up and worked his way over to the monitor attached to the doorbell. There was no one to be seen. Wait, no. He could just make out the shoulder of someone's jacket at the edge of the frame. Someone was doing their best to hide. Totally legitimate behavior. Easy enough to avoid, though. He just had to pretend not to be home, and... The Digimon linker on his wrist let out a chime. Whoa! A message notification. From Tartarus. I'm at your apartment right now. Tartarus or not. Whoever it was definitely knew Eiji was home now that he'd been startled into giving himself away. You're in there, aren't you, Code Cracker Fang? A deep voice bellowed through the door. A.G. knew it in an instant. Tartarus really was at this door. But now he heard other voices bleeding through the door and the intercom. Hey, you the leader of the SOC? Yeah, what of it? You startled me. Except there wasn't even a hint of surprise in the reply. AG froze. What the... Lugamon? Where'd you go? AG whisper shouted. The Digimon's hololized form was nowhere to be seen. They hadn't... slipped out through the wall. Had they? Hololizing in front of Anyone other than Eiji outside the DDL was a violation of the contract Eiji signed with Professor Ryusenji. The electric lock slid open with a mechanical whir and a thunk. The locks on these cheap apartments were child's play for any Digimon to hack. The door slid open and Lugamon slid through the crack. Hey Eiji, the real life Tartarus is standing out there. Some old guy. You gotta be kidding me. The owner of the deep voice now darkened Eiji's doorway. His build wasn't all that different from Eiji's, and he wore a black jacket. He slowly took off his frameless glasses, which looked like they might also be a piece of tech in their own right. Judging by his face, he was in his... 30s? 40s? He clearly hadn't been worn down by a soul-sucking corporate desk job so it was hard to tell. The lack of crisp corporate dress didn't make him any less intimidating, though. May I come in? He asked, looking down at his feet. Sneakers were haphazardly piled in the small entranceway, leaving him no place to step in and remove his own shoes. Uh, uh, uh. Eiji spluttered as the man removed his shoes and stepped into the apartment anyway, 
shutting the door behind him. At least get some tea going, A.G. We've got a visitor, Lugamon said gruffly. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't go out of your way for me. Besides, I imagine you don't have tea at the ready anyhow, living on your own like you do. This isn't a bad little space. How big is it? It's, uh, three tatami. One of those trendy small rooms, eh? Wow. A loft. A dedicated shower room. Electronic lock. Intercom. A small kitchen. Tatros peered into the toilet, the door to which was wide open. Wow. You've even got a fancy washlet toilet. I wouldn't mind living here myself. Yeah, but when you sit down on the toilet, your knees prevent the door from shutting. And the walls are thin. We can hear the neighbors getting all snuggly and mushy. Lugamon quickly added. The apartment I lived in as a student was a wood frame building that was already 40 years old by the time I moved in. It was infested with rats. Is this for your parents? The man asked, pressing his hands together as he knelt down before the small altar. Edgy had no idea what the etiquette for someone barging into your house and then paying their respects and simply lowered his head in thanks. The WWW flight. What an awful accident. Tartarus had clearly done his homework on Edgy's story. Eiji's parents had indeed died as a result of the Digimon attack on their flight, but their bodies were never recovered, and no funeral was held. After a month, they were presumed dead. Eiji filled out the paperwork, had mortuary tablets engraved in their honor, and set up the small altar in their honor. The money the airline paid out to accident victims was long gone for a variety of reasons, and the money he got from selling his parents' house merely offset the remaining payment on the mortgage. That left their life insurance payouts, which had since been spent on daily necessities. Eiji had no bandwidth for high school entrance exams and joined the ranks of the unemployed until he discovered the world of code cracking. Oh, here. I brought you some supplies the man said, placing a convenience store back on the floor. AJ looked inside to find a sports drink and a bottle of tea within. Uh, AJ's voice was a dry rasp. Just take it, AJ. You haven't had anything in ages, Lugamon urged. I thought that might be the case. That's why I came, Tatros said. What do you mean? AJ asked, befuddled. Someone very important to me went DMIA too. It was my fault. I didn't need anything for a good long while. I replayed the moment endlessly in my head, regretting every little thing I didn't do differently. Threw up and drowned my sorrows in alcohol, lost all hope, and threw up again for good measure. Wait, DMIE? Who? When? A.G. asked, frantically trying to piece the story together. This was Tartarus, the leader of the SOC. The same Tartarus who never let a single person on any of his missions go DMIA. Wasn't it? Tartarus put another shopping bag on the table. A.G.'s stomach growled, as if on cue. Finally, he got to see what he'd been smelling but had been too distracted to ask after, since Tartarus set foot in his apartment. Beef bowls with extra meat and pork miso soup. That sound tells me you've got the will to live. Go on, eat, he said to A.G., who was too surprised to eat. Then take a shower, a nice, long, hot shower. You're young enough that that ought to bring you back to life. What, are you too weak to take the lid off and split those disposable chopsticks? Thanks for the food, Aegis said as he picked up the chopsticks and lifted the first bite to his mouth.